All right. Good evening, everybody. When I call your name, if you'll just please say here. OK, Regent Crum. Here. Vice Chair Drage. Here. Um, Regent Marvel. Here. Chair here. Sanchez. Here. Regent Shelton. Here. Regent Starkey. Regent here. Regent Stutzka. Here. Regent Tackard. And I don't think he's here. So uh, Regent Tackard and Regent Hertenberger are still not on with us, but we will proceed and move forward at this time. We do have a quorum, so go ahead, Tammy, and complete okay. the roll. Uh, Dr. Chris Albright. Here. Dr. Jade Bourne. Here. Wendy Del Bello. Here. Karen Edwards. Here. Dr. Cindy Griffith. Here. Carl Steger. Here. Kelly Klimt. Here. Debbie Kraft. Here. Galen Capps. Here. Alan Phillips. Jason Schrauber. Tammy Giffro. Jonathan Brush. Uh oh. I don't see him either. Let me go get my phone and see if he's texted me. Okay. Uh, Mr. Amos Byington. Mr. Matt Graves. Ms. Shirley Brothers. She's here. <laughs> yes, I'm here. I, I, sorry, I had to turn my lights on. Okay. Thank you, uh, Thank Mr. You. Robert. Mr. Robert Bell. Mr. Scott Bolton. I'm here. This Robert Bell. I'm here. OK, thank you. Scott Bolton is here. OK. And I think that's everyone that I called thus far. Right. Being uh, that we are um, going to call the meeting to order and then go into executive session, I think what we will do is proceed um, with the formalities and um, then as people come on, Kelly, we'll just add them and and make note of it. Dr. Albrecht. Thank you, Chair Sanchez. Uh, I, I see that Jonathan texted me. He said he's on the meeting and can see but apparently not able to be heard. So Kelly, can you assist him? Yes, ma'am, it sounds like he got dumped into the attendee view, um, so I'll contact him. Um, actually, if you would just go ahead and contact him or send him a text, ask him to go ahead and join the executive session, and then I'll make sure I send that link back over to him. Sounds great. Okay, <clears throat> um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, proceed. Uh, Dr. Albrecht, do you certify that the notice of the meeting was posted in accordance with Title V, Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code? I do so certify. Thank you. It is 6.04 and this meeting is hereby called to order. We have the presence of a quorum attending by video conference. Notice of this workshop has been posted online for at least 72 hours. On March 16, 2020, Governor Greg Abbott granted a re request by Attorney General Ken Paxton to temporarily suspend a limited number of open meetings laws to the extent necessary to allow telephonic or video conference meetings in response to the coronavirus COVID-19. In accordance with those suspended rules, the board certifies the following. A, although members of the board are not gathered in a central physical location, we do have a quorum in attendance at this meeting by video conference. B, this meeting is being held by video conference because the convening at one location of a quorum of the governmental body is not appropriate during the COVID-19 public health emergency. C, based on current guidance from federal, state, and county authorities, 
concerning large gatherings and social distancing during the COVID-19 public health emergency. There is no established location for an audience to observe the meeting. However, the live meeting is accessible through a web link that was timely and appropriately provided to the public and media as part of the meeting posting and via the college's website. As we would at any uh, in-person meeting, members of the public who have followed the standard instructions for registering to speak during the public comment portion will be allowed five minutes to speak. All other meeting procedures will adhere to board adopted procedures to the extent practicable. A video recording of this meeting is being made and will be available to the public on the college's website. We will now adjourn to a closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071 for the purpose of private consultation with uh, our attorneys to deliver the timeline of the presidential selection process as in accordance with Texas Government Code Section 551.074 and to deliberate the dismissal of a public officer or employee in accordance with Texas Government Code Section 551.074. The time is now 6.06 p.m. So we will now go um, to executive session. That got Not there at that time. Um, okay. Secretary Hartenberger. If you will stay here, please. Maybe she's not in yet. Oh, maybe. Okay, I can always come back. Okay. Regent Tackard? Not here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Alan Phillips? No. Jason Schrauber? I know he's back on. Um, Mr. Jonathan Brush. I believe he is here, just can't hear him. Uh, Mr. Amos Byington. Here. All right. Is Mr. Matt Graves with you tonight? He's not. Okay, thank you. And here. here. Oh, thank you. And Secretary Hartenberger. Okay, I think, I think we will, um, since we have a quorum, I think we will go ahead and proceed. And if um, Kelly, um, Patty is trying to get back in, I guess um, you will allow her in or whatever so we can move on. Yes, ma'am. If anyone happens to hear from her, please just let me know and I'll see what I can do to help. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it is. Um, yes, ma'am. There's Sanchez. Uh, I'm getting a text from Jonathan again saying I'm here, but I'm not audible again. Mm. Okay, he's in the attendee link. I'll send him a separate account and some information to get him into the meeting. Okay, uh, we like, don't need him just now anyway, so he, we're okay to get started. Would you think not, uh, Dr. A? I think yeah. we're good. Okay. Uh, and Dr. Okay. Mark, if you would just let him know to expect an email from me, please. Just do a text him that. Great. Thank goodness for technology. OK, it is now um, 6.53 and I'm calling this um, meeting back to order. Uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, say the pledge. And after the pledge, uh, I, I have asked Regent Shelton to do the invocation. So you don't have to unmute yourself. You can just lip sync it if you want. So here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Regent Shelton, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today thankful for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, and your extended blessings in our lives. Today we pray for our nation, for our state, for our county, for our community. We pray for the families affected by sickness in our nation and around our world. We pray for a renewed sense of wellness, physical, spiritual, emotional, mental. 
We pray, Lord, for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and divine favor. We pray specifically for our college, our mission to this community, and the fulfillment of that purpose. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to make decisions that are pleasing to you, that are consistent with that which is right, that which is just and fair. We pray all of these things in that name above every name, the beautiful, magnificent, resplendent name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Uh, it is the point in our meeting where we normally hear our citizen inquiries for public comment. And uh, Mrs. Giffro has uh, let me know that we have no uh, speakers tonight. So we are going to go to item three, our board member reports. And this is the time when you as board members can share um, something in, in regards to our ACC community. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, Regent Tacker. Uh, do you have anything to report? Regent Tacker, you're on mute, sir. I just hope that all of our staff and uh, students and uh, faculty all had a great break and they're ready to get back to business. Thank you, sir. Regent Stuxa. You're on mute, Roger. Regent Stuxa. I was muted. I go off, Mr. Tacker. It's, uh, it's nice to have everybody see all these smiling faces. They will get back to business and take care of the college needs. And uh, hope you all had a good New Year. Thank you, sir. Uh, Regent Starkey. Nothing to report. Thank you. Regent Shelton. Nothing necessary to report except to offer a uh, moment of recognition for our employees that are retiring and specifically uh, I think it would be prudent for the board to recognize uh, Ms. Kraft for all of her contributions that have impacted us in so many ways. So congratulations on your retirement. Thank you and, and yes I think we would all uh, echo that sentiment. Uh, Regent uh, Marvel. I just echo the sentiments before me and uh, nothing else to report. Uh, Regent Draghi, Vice Chair Draghi. You know me, I got plenty. Um, first of all, I want to say uh, whoever put together, or I'm sure it was probably the marketing department, put together the year in review. I just want to thank y'all for um, putting some pictures in there of the regents. That was really nice. I, I appreciate the presence in the video. Um, of course, yes, definitely congratulations um, are in order to Debbie um, for everything that she's done for the college in general, but definitely for um, all of our regents whenever we give her strange requests and ask her to, to provide things for us that might be out of the ordinary. And um, let's see, today I was at the chamber retreat in uh, Manville and in attendance was Greg Blanchard with Ascend Performance Materials and he gave us a really nice compliment today. He, um, in fact, he went out of his way to make sure that he made a compliment about our, um, the quality of employees that they receive coming out of our Process Tech program and that he is very, um, uh, pleased and fortunate to have such a wonderful working relationship with ACC. So I thought that was very nice and kudos to our um, kudos to that program. And speaking of CEWD, I just have a question for that. Um, we are offering a metal structure welding class that I think just came out and um, I would love to take that class, but it's three weeks, Monday through Friday, 830 to 4. So for those of us who work, we cannot take that class. And if it's continuing ed, can we see if maybe we can get that at a nighttime? <laughs> I would take it for six months if we could do it at night. <laughs> it just seems like a really interesting class. It'd be fun. That's all I got. Great. Uh, let's see, who have I missed? Um, Secretary Hertenberger, is she back? 
I, I don't think she is. Uh, Regent Crum. Nothing to report this time. Okay, so I think that leaves me, right? Um, and I all I can say is um, thank you to to all of the team out uh, at the college uh, for all that they do. Kelly Clint, poor thing, you know, he gets these requests from these old regents that get a different phone and don't have their email on there and don't know what to do. And he is just so patient and kind, treats the old lady just as if he were treating his grandma. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Kelly, so much. And Debbie, Debbie, you have always been so, um, ready to help Carl when he had those questions. I'm thinking, oh, I hope he's got another one as good as you right next to him uh, soon because you were always, I felt like, right there um, to help him as he proceeded through all the questions that we threw at him. Um, also, I appreciate the fact that you have volunteered to do the United Way um, tax prep every year that we've done it. And so, um, you have that volunteer heart and we truly, truly appreciate you and we are all going to uh, miss you dearly. And so uh, we just wish you Godspeed. So um, I think that's it for our board reports. Did I miss anyone? I don't think I did. OK, so we're going to move on to um, item number four and uh, it's approval of the minutes for our regular board meeting on November the 19th. I would entertain a motion from uh, Regent Crum and a second from Vice Chair Draghi, please. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the table. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call roll. I don't think it, there were any questions or corrections to those minutes, right? Okay, so let's proceed. Uh, please, yes, uh, just answer yes if you approve. Uh, Regent Crum? Yes. Vice Chair Draghi? Yes. Secretary Hertenberger. Regent Marvel. Yes. Regent Shelton. Yes. Regent Starkey. Yes. Regent Tackard. Yes. Regent Stuxa. Yes. And Chair Sanchez. Yes. The uh, motion passes 8-0. Um, Item number five are information items. You have the information on personnel action, on the ACC employee count, and the ACC employee resignations. Those were all presented for your information. I don't think we need to do anything with those tonight. So um, I'm going to be moving through this agenda. So if you need to stop me, holler loud, because <laughs> we're going to get through this. Um, Item number six is the president's report. It's for information only. Dr. Albrecht, proceed, please. Thank you, Chair Sanchez. And I think Wendy is going to put up a very short PowerPoint. Is Mammoth coming? <laughs> Thank you. Can you put it in slideshow yeah. mode? Thank there you. We well, today is the first day of the 87th Legislative legislative session in in uh, Austin, and so I thought I would talk just briefly about the uh, the ask from the community colleges group. So this is uh, some information about the college in general. Of course, we have been challenged with COVID nineteen um, for the last ten months and more, and still trying to maintain our goal of by at least uh, that at least five thousand five hundred. Texans would have completed a degree, either a certificate or a degree from college or university uh, by, um, by, tw uh, by 2020. Uh, accor uh, the, according to the most recent data, we've only got to 43% of this level. You can see our enrollment versus state funding on the chart bar chart on the left, and you can see the pie chart, which is very interesting, which shows that um, how much percentage of our funding is coming from our three revenue sources, state funding, property and tax revenue, and tuition and fees. And this is some information that we pulled together to share with uh, Representative Thompson when we met with him a few weeks ago. And this is the Texas Association of Community Colleges ask. We get together as all the colleges in the state 
that's almost true. Two two colleges have just seceded from our or our little union, uh, so there's, we're down to 48. But this is what we're bringing forward. That our, our North Star or our primary goal and our, our primary ask is to get con is to get funding that's adequate to serve our community colleges. And so we were told early on not to ask for more money than we did in the 86 legislative session. And so we stuck with that and are asking for this number over on the that you see one point eight three three uh, million dollars for all of the community colleges. <clears throat> but what we did, um, Wendy, if you could go to the next slide, is that we said we want the same amount of money, but we'd like it to go into our pots of different pots of funding a little bit differently. So we've asked for an increase in funding for core operations from the 68 million that you see that we had last session to 100 million. Um, that we uh, increase our student success points um, to up to $215 per success point, and that we lower the amount of money for our contact hour reimbursement. Um, the Bachelors of Applied Technology doesn't apply to us, I will say this hopefully, yet, but one day we'll, we will be there. And then we we did ask for one new initiative, but it's separate from our regular source of funding, and that's a, a new workforce initiative that I'll tell you about. I think it might be in the next slide. Oh no, this has got a little bit more detail about the success points. We've asked for some additional success point funding, as I mentioned, up to two hundred and fifteen dollars per student success point, but we've also asked for additional weight for students who complete their first 15 semester credit hours from dual enrollment. So normally we get one point if you after the student completes their 15 semester credit hours. Well, we're asking it for it to be 1.5 for those students that complete their fir first 15 hours in dual enrollment. That'll be really good for us because we have such a high percentage of dual enrollment students. And then secondarily, we've asked for additional weights for students who complete 15 semester credit hours and transfer when they get their degree or certificate and when they get their degree or certificate in a critical field and extra points if they are economically disadvantaged or academically disadvantaged recognizing that those students are more difficult to uh, educate and i think next is about our second initiative our second initiative is this asking for 50 million dollars for a Texas reskilling and upskilling through education or true initiative and it's 50 million dollars that's 1 million dollars for each of our colleges in the state mm -hmm. and if you go to the next slide Wendy that with the pictorial um, this is a, a um, an initiative to help adult students and people who have lost their jobs through the pandemic or for what other reason to get to college to get a quick a short term certificate training and get back to work. And so the money uh, would be used to either develop these certificates or perhaps it could be used to help um, in, with tuition and fees. Next slide. And then lastly, which doesn't really pertain much to us, but it's about moving the small business development centers from Article 3 the, in the education arena to the business and economic development arena uh, under the Texas Workforce Commission. So I think that is is there one more slide? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, so that, that's our main ask that we're taking to the legislative, uh, the 87th legislative session. Lastly, I have a, the new uh, Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges symbol of accreditation, which we uh, they are very proud of. They just developed this and they've sent it to all of the colleges that are accredited for us to put on our website. But I put it up here today to remind me to tell you that just today I had, had a very interesting email from our vice president of SACS, Dr. Linda Thomas Glover, who was oversaw our SACS site visit back in um, October. And I know that our board officers met with her and visited with her. Well, she sent me an email today and she said, we're re getting ready to do some training in the summer. And it was in the student services arena. And we'd like permission to use your uh, compliance document in that area to use for training and I was like wow that's pretty great they want to use our stuff and before I, so I wrote back and I said oh it would be an honor to have you use any of our materials in our training but just just for clarification are you asking because you're telling showing people what you should do or what you shouldn't do <laughs> and uh, she wrote back and said 
your document was stellar. And so I forward it right away to Dr. Griffith because, you know, it's her writing team that, I mean, the student services area, of course, contributed all of the information needed to write that document. But they they um, wordsmith it and tweak it and made it uh, per so nice that they want to use it for training purposes. So that's that concludes my report, Chair Sanchez. That is awesome. What awesome news So we're we're going to be uh, highlighted. That's that's wonderful. Uh, and now we move on to uh, item seven, which is uh, president's goal uh, number five, uh, associate of science and engineering. And so Dr. Uh, A will talk to us about this. But once we're done, I would like to have um, uh, 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 Regent Marvel and uh, Regent Shelton um, make the, the motion and a second on that. So Dr. A. Chair Sanchez, this will be this will be a brief report. Uh, one of the goals that you gave me, goal number five, was to develop an AS in uh, the Associate Science in Engineering. And similar to the process that we use for the AAS degree programs, uh, we went we went through and uh, researched the the need for the program area and the potential student demand, um, and then projected costs, and then laid out a curriculum. And so I, I don't I don't think we have to talk too much about that, but it's a little bit different in that this is a transfer degree. And most of the time when I bring you degree programs there, they are called the terminal degrees or the Associate of Applied Science. So what we had to look into more carefully here is whether this degree would transfer to uh, the four year programs in the area. And uh, I'm very excited that we have had some initial meetings. We actually began talking with UH Clear Lake about this, probably Dr. Griffith did probably a couple of years ago, about wouldn't it be cool if we could be the first two years of your engineering program and work out some kind of a co-enrollment whereby our students would enroll in, in our program, our engineering program and UH Clear Lake's program and have access to the benefits of both of the uh, uh, higher education institutions. So we haven't we haven't got that solidified yet, but by the time this program will be offered in 2022, that is the the hope that we will be able to have that underway. That UH Clear Lake is very excited about it and uh, and we are too. So uh, we, this program would initially begin with just adjunct faculty, so the cost is is quite low because that's all the, the real cost will be. We have uh, most all of the software that we need and I'm told that the one other piece that we might want is has a, a um, free version so we won't even need to worry about that and so uh, very excited to move this forward it, I, we've wanted to have an engineering program for a long time and uh, and I think uh, we our next step would be upon your approval this evening hopefully we would then send it into the Texas Higher Ed Coordinating Board for their approval and then to Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on College with a target date again for fall of 2022. Awesome. So uh, Regent Marvel, if you would recommend that the Board of Regents approve the Associates of Science and Engineering program as presented and then uh, Regent Shelton second, please. So moved. Second. Great. We have a motion on the table. I'll now call roll. Please respond with yes or no. Regent Crum. Yes. Vice Chair Draghi. Yes. Secretary Hertenberger. Um, Regent Marvel. Yes. Regent Shelton. Yes. Regent Starkey. Yes. Regent Stuxa. Yes. Regent Tackard. Yes. And Chair Sanchez. Yes. So the motion passes 8-0. Moving forward, let's go to item number eight. And uh, this is a time when we have um, two visitors. Um, um, both familiar to us. Uh, this is an information only uh, report, so we are going to turn um, the program over to Mrs. Shirley Brothers and Mr. Scott Bolton. Go ahead. Okay, I've got um, my trusty sidekick, Wendy Delbello there helping me with the PowerPoint. Uh, so you'll be able to follow along, but thank you and good evening Regents and Dr. Albrecht. I really appreciate this opportunity to share with you all, all the success that the foundation has had during the 2019-2020 school year. 
and what a unique year it was. As you know, the mission of the ACC Foundation is to provide opportunities for students, faculty, and the college. Um, reading there, it supports the college as an administrator of scholarships and grants through donations and fundraising, and of course strives as a foundation for success and excellence for students and for Alvin Community College. I'm happy to report that despite the pandemic, we were able to award over $100,000 in scholarships to Alvin High School, Manville High School, Assets, now known as Rise Academy, and Shadow Creek High School to their graduating seniors and, and of course, current ACC students. We've awarded over $12,000 in innovative grants to encourage ideas on our campus. Many of those are listed there, or all of them are listed there, so I won't go through the whole list, but we are so proud of those staff members and uh, the um, innovative ideas that they have come up with. The foundation also raised over $14,000 through Adopt-A-Grants to help programs like you see there, um, the Strive Program, Culinary Equipment, and more. So I won't go through that list with you um, word for word so you can look at it, but, but I know many of you uh, contributed and have been involved with some of those programs, so thank you so much. You know, the 20th annual gala that we held on November the 19th, uh, November 2019, excuse me, was with we had more guests than ever before and so much fun. Nick and the group are definitely um, a, a fun, fun group to have. We had lots of fun uh, singing and dancing with them. I'm pleased to announce that we once again sur surpassed our past galas by raising over $56,000 for scholarships, grants, and other college programs. It was great fun. Thanks to all of you who were there. I know you enjoyed it as much as we did. This year, we were also proud to have several new scholarships created. The Avery Guterres Memorial Scholarship honors a student uh, that was one of our process technology students who uh, passed away tragically. Uh, we also established the Mary Perez Montague Scholarship that um, is given to students who may be homeless, uh, were in maybe in foster care or students who um, came from very difficult life situations. So, so happy to be able to uh, have that scholarship now. And finally, of course, our Bill Lewis Memorial Scholarship that we created to honor our good friend Bill Lewis. We also received several grants during the 2019-2020 year. Uh, uh, Marguerite Edwards grants uh, for the Upward Bound program for the Children's Theater and for the lab school. We also received a grant for Allied Health students from the Community Foundation of Brazoria County and a Process Tech Scholarship grant from Union Pacific. Um, Wendy also added there the Texas New Mexico Power Up grant for campus security. So we have been very, very fortunate to receive those grants. And all in all, um, approximately $40,000 in grants this year. So that is a really um, such a boon to our program and what we're able to do for students. The foundation continued to award the excellence awards this year, but you know, this was a crazy year and we realized that we had to do something just a little bit differently. So many people worked hard to keep Alvin Community College going during the pandemic uh, from March and through the end of the year and all of the special challenges that we faced, we recognized those and thought we need to do something different. So um, it was no surprise to us that many, many of our faculty and staff members went way and beyond, way and beyond the call of duty to make this process, our the school end of the school year so successful. So our board unanimously voted to award six employees instead of the traditional three because of the amazing things that they do every single year, but especially this year. So in 2020, we recognized our very own Kelly Clamp, who we can't do without, Dr. Cindy Griffith, who's just a, a bright light for us there and does so much, Carmen, who is so fun to be around and, and such a neat lady, Kyle, who, gosh, what would we do without Kyle, Tracy, 
Elliot and Thomas Parker. I got to meet some of these people for the first time and then of course see some of them that I've known for a long time. So we're so proud to be able to give all six of these outstanding faculty members the Excellence Award. You know, our employees continue to contribute every single year participating in our payroll deduction program. Uh, you'll see our great T-shirts there. I've got mine on tonight in honor of the presentation we're doing. But during the year we had approximately during that year, we had approximately one third of our employees donate a total of almost $17,000, more than doubling last year's contributions. But the really exciting thing that Wendy shared with me uh, yesterday was that every day more and more employees are signing up. We're not sure if it's that cute t-shirt or just wanting to be a part, but whatever it is, we are so thankful for our staff members and faculty who want to contribute to our payroll deduction program. So for those of you who have done that, that are, on, are, are, are there tonight, thank you so much. You know, as we look at our overview, we've got to look at some numbers. So um, the foundation is very proud to announce that we also completed our third aud audit with Harris, Belt, and Pushasik. We recently received word that we came through the audit with flying colors, no issues whatsoever. So that's a, a, a such a good news for us. We knew it was going to be that way because we do take good care of our finances. And at this time, I want to introduce or, or recognize our good friend Scott Bolton to do an overview of our financial portfolio. So Scott, it's up to you now. Thank you so very much. Um, I think Wendy has the PowerPoint that we have in front of us. Uh, I've been doing some reviews with my clients and I told them if you woke up uh, January 1st of this year and then you took a nap until December 31st, you would think it was a great year and the markets really didn't do much. Uh, but if in between there, uh, most of you have been aware of, uh, we've had the greatest downturn in the market uh, since the Great Depression and some in under some analysts uh, perspective uh, worse than the Great Depression. Uh, the good news is if you look on on page four that we have in front of you, uh, you can kind of see of where we've been over the last four years. Uh, and the, the numbers that I look at there is uh, in, in 2016, we had about $2.4 million. Uh, today, and I'm, I'm not going to, Wendy and I always kind of joke about this. I hate giving numbers because the market tends to move on us. Uh, but I looked at our balance and we're at 3.935. So we're within a fundraiser of, of $4 million, which is exciting to me. Uh, if you turn to page five, you'll see uh, those those numbers in front of you. We started the year at 3.5 million. Uh, after the first quarter, uh, the market went down uh, almost 20% during that time frame. Uh, we dropped about five, almost $600,000 or about 16% uh, where you see right there. Uh, the good news is uh, we didn't go down as much as the market and that's why we invest the way we do. Uh, and then we've uh, nicely risen uh, to the year end. Uh, we went up from, from that low spot 33% to our year end. So it's been a really dynamic market. Uh, but for the year, we returned uh, from the beginning, from January 1st till December 31st, our total return was about 11%. So if you turn to the next page, you'll see how that is. I uh, hope you can see the numbers right there, but over a one-year period, we had 11, uh, over 11% return on our portfolio. Uh, the important part there is uh, we didn't go down nearly as much as the market, and so we benefited from that in, in growth in our portfolio. I'm very proud, if you can see right below the, the, the bar graph, um, where it has the, the best and worst time periods that we've ever had, uh, I'm proud to say that we didn't, we didn't go down this year. This wasn't our worst period, so our portfolio worked very well for us. Uh, our worst time period was in 2008. So that's that's very good news for us, uh, earning 11% this year, uh, having some growth in our portfolio when we really needed it. So if you go to the next page that we have in front, <clears throat> this is one that I'm proud of y'all so much for. If you look over on the far right-hand column, if you look over there, cash out, 
you've paid out, and we just sent out a check today for y'all, you've paid out over $800,000 out of our, our, our foundation account supporting students and teachers and education, and that's huge. And uh, what I'm very proud of is we're getting close to a million dollars that we've helped kids uh, go to school and help teachers do their job, and, and that's great for the size foundation that we are. We've had a good year. Uh, not taking a hit on it, and that gives us the funds to help kids more. So I'm very proud of that, Mark. I, I, I predict that shortly we will eclipse giving out over a million dollars to help college funds. If you go to the next slide, this is the one that most of my clients like to look at. Uh, what people tend to forget is the markets were down in 2018. Uh, 2019, we had a really good market. Uh, we were up in the portfolio of 20%, and uh, when about half your portfolio is fixed income, that's a, a marvelous return. Uh, and then you see where to, uh, for 2020, uh, we're at 11%. So uh, in spite of the turmoil, you know, we woke up at the end of the year uh, very positive for us. And then we're, we're getting very close to the $4 million mark. And I expect us to get there quickly. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Wendy did uh, tell me yesterday, and I think her her words were, "We are knocking at the door of four million dollars." So that is uh, a, quite an accomplishment. You know, the key to the success of the foundation is is attributed to several things. First, you know, an active and involved board of directors, and you see those people uh, listed there. And second, as a board, we have a strong desire to assist students in obtaining the education they need to be successful in the future. And third, we have a great financial advisor in Scott Bolton. So, and finally, we've got a great staff in Wendy and Sydney. Uh, what would we do without them? They keep us in line, but also help us and guide the foundation and all of us as we continue to do our good work. So today I am proud to present to represent the foundation and present a check for $151,486.31 that reflects the support that Alvin Community College Foundation has provided to Alvin Community College during the 2019-2020 school year. So there you go, and you can take that one to the bank. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shirley yes. and Scott. Yes. Bill, I just had one more thing I wanted to 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 say okay. if I could just sure. take it a minute. Finally, um, you know, this fall we were disappointed that we couldn't all come together in November for our gala um, due to COVID, obviously. But I am so excited to tell you that our Granting Wishes virtual gala is doing amazing. Our foundation board of the board actually kicked off the campaign by all contributing to make a ten thousand dollar donation from personally from all of us to to have our ten a ten thousand dollar sponsorship and after that we were off and we have not stopped so today we have raised sixty thousand dollars and we're not done yet i did want to thank all of you regents because i know you contributed as well uh to make this sixty thousand dollars possible so um as i said we're not done yet uh, we will continue to get donations every day, so we'll hopefully be able to report to you the success of our Granting Wishes uh, virtual gala. So on behalf of the entire Foundation Board, thank you uh, for allowing me to come tonight and, and be with you to share with you what we're able to do as we continue to make it happen at Alvin Community College. Choose kind. Thank you so much uh, once again, uh, Shirley and Scott Bolton. We so appreciate you. And yes, we do appreciate uh, Wendy and Sydney. They um, that we couldn't do without them. So thanks again. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we now move to item nine, uh, which is consider the acceptance of the 2019-2020 annual audit report, uh, financial report. Uh, and Mr. Steger and Mr. Robert Belt will be reporting on this. Uh, I would entertain once they are done uh, a, a motion by uh, Regent Shelton and a second by Regent Starkey, please. Uh, Mr. Steger. Yeah, I'd like to introduce uh, Robert Belt with Belt Harris and Pahachek. Uh, he is a 
a uh, partner with the firm that you have not met probably before, maybe at the very beginning when we first uh, accepted them as our auditors. And uh, he was the partner over the audit this year. And uh, I'll let I'll turn it over to him to uh, give us a little rundown on, on how the audit went this year. Well, good evening. It's, it's my honor to present the results of the audit. Our audit opinion letter is an unmodified letter, which is the highest level of assurance we can provide to the board that all the disclosures required by generally accepted accounting principles have been included and that the financial statements are materially correct. I'm also very happy to report that during our audit process, we did not encounter any uh, material weaknesses or, or significant deficiencies, in internal controls, any or any issues of non-compliance that were required reporting to the board. There was a small uh, finding in the previous year's audit that we followed up on and, and we did ensure that that had been addressed during the current year audit. So that was looking very great. Uh, all in all, it was a great year. There's a tremendous amount of uh, financial information within the report. I'm not going to go through all of that with you, uh, but I would just like to point out that revenues exceeded expenditures for the year of uh, $5,023,000. So that was a significant increase in your net position for the year. So that was great financial news to be getting. Uh, and then I also want to recognize uh, Deborah, although I've been on uh, most of the emails going back and forth between our auditor, William and her, uh, she's been a delight to work fit with during this audit process. And I think this is such an excellent note for her to go out on in terms of the results of the audit. That concludes my remarks and I'm more than happy to entertain any questions the board may have. Great, so um, before we can uh, uh, ask any questions, I would uh, entertain that motion from uh, uh, Regent Shelton, please, and a second by uh, Regent Starkey. I move to accept the report as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the table. Uh, now, do we have any questions for either Mr. Belt or Mr. Steger? Great. Hearing none, I will move the motion. I uh, will call the motion. Uh, Regent Crum? Yes. Vice Chair Draghi? Yes. Secretary Hertenberger? Regent Marvel? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Okay, I've got you, Patty. Regent Shelton? Yes. Regent Starkey? Yes. Regent St uh, Stuxa? Yes. Regent Tackard? Yes. And Chair Sanchez votes yes. So we have a unanimous um, uh, outcome, 9-0 uh, on that uh, um on that item. Uh, we are now moving to item 10. Thank you, Mr. Belt, for being here and joining us. Um, item 10, annual consideration of approval of the audited unrestricted fund balance available to transfer to institutional reserve. Uh, Mr. Uh, Steger, would you like to speak to that? Yes, um, this was again a, a good year uh, for the um, unrestricted fund balance. Uh, as you just saw the audit, those numbers that he was talking about when he talked about a little over five million, that's all funds. And with this unrestricted fund balance, we're talking about the operating part of the budget, fund 11 specifically. Um, the, uh, let me see if I can share my screen here. Um, So with the, uh, the amount of money available to transfer to the unrestricted fund balance uh, after this year's audit is $2,019,957.51. Uh, now that number uh, is that large because we were able to charge uh, two expenses for last year of $700,749 to the CARES uh, grant. Um, now what that causes us to do or to consider is uh, when we were developing the budget last year at that at the time we were developing the budget we did not know for sure if we'd be able to charge everything because 
we were getting the rules from the federal government on what we could and could not charge to the to the uh, CARES Act. Um, so the end result was we found out what we could we could charge. Uh, we charged seven hundred twenty thousand seven forty nine out of the one point one million of institutional CARES money. At the same time, we were developing a budget for this fiscal year we're in right now uh, of uh, that was relying on that 1.1 million. So then it's like, what do we do? Well, uh, what our recommendation is, as you can see in this bottom paragraph, is we're recommending you take the 2 million, you subtract it down by the 720,000. And so that uh, the transfer that we are proposing is 1,299,208 and 51 cents. Um, and I'll go over the institutional reserve um, for you over this past year. Uh, September 19, we started with 7 million. We had a set aside in the budget of 280,000. Uh, we had interest earned on that money of 157,000. Um, and then the audit balance that we transferred one year ago at the January meeting of 2020 was 1.1 million. Uh, if you'll remember uh, a little bit later in the year or maybe in the next month, we um, set aside 600,000 to do some uh, AGCM construction projects and that left a balance at August 31 of 8 million. So we're proposing starting with that $8 million balance, adding this transfer to institutional reserve of 1,299,208 and 51 cents. And that would leave us with a balance for this current year of 9,346,999.83. Let me take you to this next page. The analysis of the unrestricted fund balance is how did we get to the 2 million? We had the uh, unrestricted fund balance at the beginning of, of uh, September 1st, 2019 of 1.1 million. Uh, we had uh, a loss in CE. CE is in fund 13. It's in a separate fund. Uh, and what this is, is a loss that is calculated by direct tuition revenues and waivers of tuition uh, against direct expenses. Uh, this number you see in here doesn't uh, take into account the state appropriation percentage uh, that we allocate towards CE because those dollars are really already in Fund 11. And in effect, they're already in uh, the revenue that's going into Fund 11. So CE is already contributing to Fund 11 um, with its $2 million worth of funds available to transfer. So we had the transfer uh, to Institutional Reserve for fiscal year 1819. That was January of a year ago. And then our expenses for fiscal year 1920 in Fund 11 were 2,425,000. And, and that's how we came to the $2 million figure. We take that $2 million figure, uh, which is basically, even though it has brackets around it, that is $2 million to the good. That's net income, you would say. And we will reduce it by 720,000 so that the transfer is 1,299,000, as I said before. I want to take you to the budget page that this affects. Here is the original budget page that we're used to looking at. And I might make it just a little bigger if I can. You can see right here we have CARES funds and it says 1,138,000. 1,138,000. That was the total institutional uh, CARES money that we were relying on to help with this budget. So what are we, we're proposing along with this transfer is that this page needs to be revised. And so you can see up here we have original in red at the top. This next page will show the revised or amended. And so you can see basically we still have the CARES fund line, but we have that remainder amount, the amount that we had not spent by September 1st, that's 418,000. And then you can see audited fund balance, 720,749. So basically we're saying unrestricted fund balance of 720,749 is now helping to support this current year budget along with the 418 for CARES Act. And we keep the budget 
uh, the same as as what was adopted back in August, and that's the one change that we are proposing in the budget page to reflect um, what goes along with this institutional reserve uh, proposal transfer. Excellent. Is that it, Mr. Steger? That is it. Okay, so I will now entertain a motion by uh, Regent Marvel and a second by Secretary Hertenberger so that we can have the motion on the table and ask questions if we so choose. Regent Marvel? Yep, uh, I make a motion to authorize the college to make the transfer of $1,299,208.51 from the unrestricted fund balance for the fiscal year ending August 31st, 2021 to the Institutional Reserve. And I second that. Thank you. We have a motion on the table. Now, do we have any questions for Mr. Steger? None? Ooh. All right. I'm going to call for a vote. Um, Regent Crum? Yes. Vice Chair Draghi? Yes. Secretary Hartenberger? Yes. Regent Marvel? Yes. Regent Shelton? Yes. Regent Starkey? Yes. Regent Stuxa? Yes. Regent Tackard? Yes. And Chair Sanchez votes yes, so that passes unanimously. Um, moving on, thank you so much, Mr. Steger. That's wonderful news. Uh, moving on. No, uh, we <laughs> can we ask Carl to stop sharing the screen so we can get a... Oh, yeah. You can quit sharing now, Carl. I'm oh, sorry about that. That's okay. I thought I had taken that. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, we are on to item number 11, which is to consider the approval of increase in numbers of athletic scholarships and re redistribution of stipend funds. And so we're going to have Dr. Albrecht and Jason, Jason Schreiber uh, speak to this. Uh, after they've done so, I would entertain a motion from Regent Stuxa and a second from Regent Tackard. Uh, so go ahead, Dr. A. Thank you, Chair Sanchez. Uh, this is a request uh, to redistribute athletic scholarship dollars. I'm understanding that years ago, and no one could find this in the books, but we are understanding that years ago that the board had set the number of scholarships uh, that could be given in the dollar amount. And so since we're, we're wanting to make a change to that, we thought we should bring it back to the board. Although there's no change in dollar amount, it's just a change in how the scholarships would, would be distributed. So you can see in your notes, uh, your board note, that uh, we currently had uh, f 15 scholarships for tuition, uh, tuition, for book scholarships, for meal scholarships, for housing, and for stipends. Uh, the NJCAA has told uh, has has a rule now that we cannot give stipends in the amounts that we have been giving. And so what this is essentially doing is taking the amounts that we had in stipends and putting them into uh, the other four pockets of funding and increasing slightly uh, the tuition scholarships and the housing scholarships, but the total remaining the same. And athletic director Jason Schreiber is on the call tonight. If for the hard questions, because I've just told you all I know. <laughs> OK, so let's go ahead and get that motion on the table so then we can ask questions if we so choose. Uh, go ahead, uh, Regent Stuxa. Make a motion that we adjust the football uh, program funds. OK. okay. Excuse me. Okay. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion on the table to approve the redistribution of funds as provided, and we have a second. So we have a motion on the floor now. If there are questions, um, um, uh, Mr. Schreiber uh, will be ready to answer them. Go, uh, go ahead, folks, if you have questions. Or, Jason, if you would like to go ahead and start by sharing information with us. Um, basically, we're not asking for any more money. It's just um, trying to be more in NJCA compliance. We are, um, you know, we, uh, the rule book says that we can give 250 a year, $250 a year per player, and we've been giving a $100 a month. And Bill Lewis and I saw this about two years ago, and we started to phase out the, um, the stipends. 
I in baseball, we don't have any stipends this semester. Uh, there's a few stipends. Uh, softball has they're still giving their stipends, but they're phasing theirs out by the uh, by next year. Great, great. Do we have any questions for um, Mr. Schreiber? I have questions. Question number one is, do we have to have a sports like baseball at all? Is it a requirement or is it our choice to have it? It is your choice, but it's all been right. a... The athletics department's been a really good program and we bring in a lot of really good players and we've got a really a lot of really good stories of people that have, you know, their lives have been changed by this college because of this athletics program. Well, with the virus, I would assume that we would have held back on the baseball until after all this is over with, because you're not going to have the attendance that you would normally have. And I see a lot of money we, that we spend from a bus to everything I looked at on the current adjustments could go a long way to helping a lot of children. <coughs> Jason, could you please uh, share? I'm not, a, I'm not a, actually in favor of having a team at all. I'll have to. Just put a plate on the table. Well, can I make a comment? Nope. Please go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Roger, we've looked at this over the years many times. This has come up. You're not the only board member that's uh, ha had an issue with it. But like with baseball, normally they have about 75, 75 to 100 sometimes guys that try out. Uh, each year for that program, which is far more than the 25 to 30 that they normally carry. So that brings in a substantially large number or larger number of students. And in the long run, what we get back from tuition and um, and also the state reimbursement, it normally way outweighs what we actually spend on it. That's what we've researched in the past. And I, I would presume that it's still pretty much the same as it is was as it was when I was there for like 30 years. But that's just they Dr. Albrecht and Jason would have to comment on that. I would like Jason to tell us that if, if you can off the top of your head, the number of enrollees in the baseball program and the softball program. Uh, right now in the spring, uh, we are sitting around 70, 70 athletes and we give about 50 since we give 30 total that are on scholarship that, you know, the rest of those are paying their own way to uh, to come to school here. That's baseball and softball? That's baseball and softball in the spring. In the fall, we baseball carries around 75 to 80 players at times, and that brings in quite a bit of money for the school. And softball starting, since we have our new coach, she's starting to bring in a lot more players paying their own way as well. So. Yeah, I, I, this has been hashed and rehashed many times <coughs> over, and I think if you're looking at ACC as only a, a place where people come to get an education, um, that's one thing. But um, anybody that knows the psychology of, of students knows that these um, extracurricular uh, activities are what many times uh, cement a student to an, uh, to an institution uh, because they may not be uh, able to go to a UT or uh, A&M that has all the foo-foo stuff, but they get a lot uh, from building that spirit of team and community by participating in events such as softball and baseball. That's not to be debated here, but we take your point, uh, uh, Roger, and that to each his own in this situation, but I'm very proud of the, uh, the work that both uh, groups do for us, softball and uh, baseball. And so I think we have a motion on the table. And so it, do I hear any questions from anyone else or comments? I just have one more question. Sure. What, what is the percentage of athletes that we have come in that, are, that complete their course and, and get their associate's degree or whatever they're after? And how many do how many 
leave for us on us? That a, I don't have the exact number of how many that graduate. Uh, we send the majority of our players on to the Division One level. And uh, in a lot of cases, they don't have to graduate to go on to the Division One level. Um, right. I'll tell you a really cool story. So a few weeks ago, a kid from the University of Harvard or Harvard University, he's worried about um, the Ivy League not playing this this year. So he is going to transfer to Alvin, continue to take his Harvard hours, come to school here, take a uh, full time load and play on our baseball team. And he is a um, special, <coughs> special young man and comes to to Alvin because of our baseball program. And this is a unique uh, reverse um, dual credit situation that, <laughs> that that happens because of because of this program. Well, I think that's very nice. And I guess where I come from with my own daughter, who was 21 in her class, we got $1,500 in scholarship. And another young lady got a full scholarship to a major college and never made it through the first year. And it was a wasted scholarship where uh, some of that, you know, you see the children that have devote themselves to their grades and accomplishing their way to uh, better grades sometimes come out the short end of the stick in relationship to sport scholarship. And that's, that's where I'm, my point of view. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Stuxa. Do we have anything else from the uh, board members? Hearing none, um, then I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Schreiber, for being with us tonight and sharing this information. I'm going to call a vote on the motion. Um, so um, we will um, commence. Um, Regent Crum? Yes. Regent Vice Chair Draghi? Yes. Secretary Hardenberger? Yes. Regent Marvel? Yes. Regent Shelton? Yes. Regent Starkey? Yes. Regent Stuxa? No. Regent Tackard? Yes. And Chair Sanchez? Yes. The motion carries 8-1. Um, uh, as I said, thank you, Mr. Schreiber. Well, we appreciate your information. Um, we are now moving to item number 12, which is the strategic plan report, goal number four. And Dr. Uh, Albrecht and Dr. Cindy Griffith will uh, present this information to us. Thank you, Chair Sanchez. I just want to uh, introduce Dr. Griffith to all of you who you needs no introduction, but wanted to tee her up to give a report on goal four. As you know, uh, throughout the year, we endeavor to provide the board with updates on our strategic plan, what we have accomplished to date. And so Dr. Griffith will be reporting on strategic plan goal four. Good evening, Chair Sanchez, Regents, President Albrecht, our faculty, staff, and guests. It is my pleasure uh, to provide an update for you on Strategic Plan Goal 4 this evening. And so Wendy Del Bello will be assisting me in this uh, presentation as we move forward. And so next, Wendy. The Strategic Plan, of course, it's a living uh, planning model in which we annually provide updates of the progress associated with each one of our institutional goals. It begins with you, the Regents, establishing and also reviewing our mission and vision, as well as our vision statement, and also the strategic plan. Next. As you recall, the strategic plan is based on an integrated planning model and that is always centered around our students and our community, and it's also scheduled around our annual budgeting cycle. Next. As you can see on this slide, the planning process is a continuous cycle, and the data is continually collected, and as we progress toward those goals and objectives and their accomplishments, it also um, is a continuation of our planning and our budget development, and lastly, of course, our resource allocations. Next. 
In our current plan, we are now working toward the conclusion of meeting our six breakthrough goals. And tonight, we'll focus in on the recent accomplishment of goal number four. Goal number four states that Alvin Community College will develop programs and partnerships to meet employment needs of the community. Next. Mm. On objective 4.1, I'll be talking about two of them in 4.1. 4.1, the first one states, we use a data-driven review process to examine the feasibility and prioritization of our potential new programs for existing and future campus sites. So the latest update with our logistics and supply chain management program that you approved last year is that it has been approved by the uh, Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. We also submitted the program prospectus to SAC COC in December, and we are awaiting their decision on um, the approval of that program. We are expecting that to occur. Tonight, you'll also be considering the faculty member um, that we hope to be hiring for logistics and supply chain, and then looking very forward to implementation in fall of this year. As well, thank you so much, um, Dr. Albrecht, for presenting our proposal on the AS and engineering and uh, board members for your approval. Um, we appreciate the Regents' support of this um, exciting new program that is uh, one of our first transfer programs that we've done in quite a few years. The curriculum uh, committee actually saw our proposal for this program. And so now with your approval this evening, we are able to take that um, further prepare for submission to the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board and then on to SAC COC um, in a prospectus form. I will say that there is uh, something that um, has occurred with uh, the changes in SAC COC and the substantive changes associated with them. And so um, for locations, um, those will be a little bit more extensive. For our new programs, that will be the same. So we don't expect any delays on that. And then um, as uh, Dr. Albrecht said, we hope to uh, continue this conversation with UHCL and have a, a co-enrollment model with them, much like Texas A&M and University of Houston, Maine has with other community colleges. So we're very excited about that. They are very excited about it. We'll continue those conversations to develop the logistics of delivering this program and hopeful implementation in fall of 2022. For the second objective in 4.1, to identify and implement strategies to serve English language learners, ELL, uh, we developed the program and it has a curriculum that includes two pathways. One of those is basic and workforce skills. So this is focused in on the basic language skills for work and for everyday activities. And this particular pathway is offered through continuing education. Then we also have in the second pathway, academic skills, and it's focused on those students who are seeking college degrees or higher level certificates. And those will be offered through our academic credit side. In um, further development, um, they also established testing and place for these students and recruitment and advising strategies. And then last and most important, faculty training and mentorship. We were very blessed to uh, be in the midst of our Wagner Pizer grant because it was able to fund our students, their tuition and also their books to be involved in this program and the institutional cost was also um, nil and absorbed by the Wagner Pizer. And so I want to send out a special thanks to our Wagner Pizer staff and all of the fine work that has been done by so many people, uh, certainly under the leadership of Dr. Nazarenko as well. Next, objective 4.2, excuse me, is to develop and implement a data-driven program evaluation model to assess the effectiveness of our college programs. In uh, 2000, at fall of 2002, there was campus-wide implementation of our three-year comprehensive program review that we lovingly call CPR. And that was for all of our credit programs as well as our campus services. And that included our non-credit programs. 
There were also improvements in the CPR process that included implementation of a cloud-based reporting tool known as Compliance Assist. For objective uh, 4.2 review of program advisory committees performed to examine the design, structure, membership, chairing, currency, and effectiveness. The progress included a revision um, and, well, a review and a revision of our advisory committee handbook, and that was done in December of 2019, led by Dr. Stacey Ebert and Dean Jeff Parks. It included a look at uh, the design and structure of our committees, the membership, uh, providing guidance on membership, chair responsibilities for the advisory committee, as well as committee effectiveness. In addition to that, there was an advisory committee workshop held. It was a mandatory training for our department chairs and our program directors, and that was held in January 2020 as a part of our convocation week. And um, we feel like that there was great benefit uh, from the presenters. Dean Parks was one of those and Dr. Ebert assisted as well. And so we um, were very pleased that many of our new program directors had an opportunity to learn more about um, program advisories and how they are uh, processed and uh, they are required to meet twice a year. And so it's very important that we um, made progress in this area. In addition to that, we had common advisory committee agendas developed. And so those were developed and implemented in January of 2020. These included uh, common agenda outcomes, a format for that for both of those meetings in the year. And then it also included uh, a common format for the committee meetings. Next, for objective 4.3, the number of dual credit duplicated enrollments is increased a minimum of 10% over five years. Well, as we all know, we have far exceeded that. But um, the most recent things that are really exciting in dual enrollment is that they are also going to be involved in program evaluation. So that's program evaluation of our College and Career Pathways Department, now under the leadership of Dr. Jessica Renero Ramirez, and that will evaluate their effectiveness on an annual basis. In addition to that, uh, now Dean Akila Martin, whenever she was our director of CCP, she organized a dual enrollment conclave, and the very first one was held with AISD in November of 2019. That meeting included uh, college and career pathway staff, also our ACC student services staff, AISD administrators, and all of the deans and administrators within the Office of Instruction. Topics included the dual enrollment logistics, evening course offerings, academic support, advertisement, community collaboration, and more. So that was very exciting. And now we will expand that to where we have these conclaves with all of our ISD partners as we move forward. Next, for objective 4.4, increase working, excuse me, workforce training grant dollar awards. To date, the college has exceeded its goal of a 20% increase in workforce education grant funding by 80%. Thank you, uh, Galen Caps, for all of your phenomenal uh, and continued work. We have also received $8.35 million in workforce education grant funds during our current strategic plan, and we're not quite complete with it yet. And in that period, we've received 23 workforce education grants uh, providing very vital STEM training in industrial technology, healthcare, and also biological research. And with that, I want to say a big special thank you to all of the ACC employees who make this happen and have helped us accomplish the objectives associated with goal four. And at this point in time, I'm happy to answer any questions that the regents may have. Do we have any, we have questions, any questions for, for Dr. Dr. Griffith? Griffith? 
Hearing none, I, I, I would, uh, I don't know why I'm echoing. Uh, I would just say uh, kudos to uh, you and the staff, you and Dr. Albrecht and all the, the folks that work so diligently to make all of these things happen. You know, um, it's it's across the board. It's, it's across the board, the hard work that we see uh, to make all of this come together. Um, so it, it, it's something that makes me feel very, very proud to be associated with ACC. So thank you both thank uh, you. ladies for this report. Thank you. Now moving on to um, item 13, consider the approval of the revisions to local board policies and TASB update 40. Uh, Dr. A is going to speak to this, and then uh, I would ask uh, Regent Crum and Secretary Hertenberger um, to make a motion and a second. Uh, Dr. A. Thank you, Chair Sanchez. As you know, um, we subscribe to TASB policy services, and at least two times a year, they send updates to the local board policies for your consideration. And tonight, uh, there are four board policies. Uh, for you to consider and vote on. Uh, I will point out they did something different this time than I haven't seen them uh, do before. Uh, they actually sent two additional policies that were um, optional, so to speak. So I did not include them for your vote, but I did include them in your packet so that you could see them. Uh, but uh, one of them is about um, a, setting up a policy for the colleges to be able to administer the EpiPen in the case of a, a, a an emergency or to train volunteers. I just, I, in, in my way of thinking, we don't have this, the um, trained staff. Usually it's done out of the police department. And I think just at this time, it would be a little overwhelming for us to take that on. So I did not include it, but at any time, if you want to consider that, uh, certainly we can bring it back. The other one is a, uh, a TASB revision uh, to DEA local, and we have seen a lot of DEA local in the recent past. It's the one about premium pay during disasters, and they recommend it. They are recommending exactly what I did a few months ago and what the board did, turned down. So I thought, I'm not bringing that one forward again. I think I know how you feel about it. So instead, we just have the four board uh, local policies, and I don't know if you have any questions about that, about those. I'd be happy to just briefly tell you anything about any of the four policies that are being uh, brought forward by TASB this evening. Okay, let's uh, hear a motion from uh, <clears throat> from uh, uh, Regent Crum and a second by uh, Secretary Hertenberger, and then we'll see if we have questions, please. Move to approve the uh, local policies that are brought forward. I second that. Thank you. So we have a motion on the table now. Do any of you have questions for Dr. Albrecht? Hearing none, we're going to move on and uh, take roll. Regent Crum? Yes. Vice Chair Draghi? Yes. Secretary Hartenberger? Yes. Regent Marvel? Yes. Regent Stuxa? Yes. Regent Shelton? Yes. Regent Starkey? Yes. Regent Tackard? Yes. And Chair Sanchez votes yes. So the uh, motion passes unanimously, 9-0. Um, let's move on to item uh, 14. And uh, we are going to hear from uh, Galen Caps in just a minute. In just a minute, but uh, when he's done, I would entertain a motion from Vice Chair Draghi and um, uh, Regent Marvel as a second uh, once this presentation is done. Mr. Caps, if you would like to proceed. Uh, good evening, Chair Sanchez and Regents, okay. Dr. Albrecht, faculty, staff, and guests. Um, I really enjoy being able to come uh, to you when we have um, exciting uh, grant opportunities. And uh, this one's an oldie, uh, but a goodie. Uh, in the, since 2008, uh, the college has received uh, eight uh, jobs and education for Texans grants, uh, totaling about $1.5 million uh, in total so far. And uh, we expect the next competition to come uh, very soon. The Workforce Commission uh, board on the uh, grant program met in November. 
uh, and made a few changes, which was uh, outstanding uh, for us in that uh, they increased the amount a college can request from uh, $300,000 to $350,000. Uh, the competition has uh, been a bit slight uh, last year due to COVID and probably will be again this year. So I think our opportunities and chances will be very good uh, on this opportunity. Um, as we do not have a uh, exact date of when the RFP uh, will come out, we're doing kind of a guess as uh, compared to last year uh, when the funding might uh, uh, be awarded would probably be June or July of this year. Uh, the expected grant period usually is 12 months, uh, would run uh, from the summer of this year to the summer of 2022. Um, as in past years, uh, the grant program uh, requires a 5% match uh, for any equipment software cost. Uh, those uh, the college uh, has been always been able to uh, uh, utilize through uh, departmental uh, funding uh, set aside for uh, annual equipment and software purchases, as well as through Perkins grants and other grants uh, that we received during the year. Um, the uh, general use of this particular grant would go to the uh, process technology program, uh, which would provide vital equipment software for industrial training to ensure students attain the skills currently in demand in the chemical and energy production field. And that's all I have. <laughs> Wonderful. So let me go ahead and have that uh, motion, please, Vice Chair Draghi. Yes. OK, a motion to approve the college's submittal of the grant described okay. uh, is uh, pr presented and then Our a second. second. Bye. Welcome to the house. Uh, 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 uh -huh. Bye. A, a, a second uh, by uh, Regent Marvel, right, Regent Marvel? Yes, second. OK, so we have a motion on the table. Let's go ahead and call the vote. Uh, Regent Crow. I, I have a comment, Bill. Yes, I'm uh, sorry. I just want to say, uh, Galen, um, thank you for keeping us on track with these, the, the annual awards of this nature. With the focus on um, process tech, I just saw an economic development um, proposal recently or the statistics over time. This is critical and, and just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Well, yes, thank definitely. You. And, you know, Jody spoke earlier about uh, the chamber uh, presentation today by Ascend and that it just it just, you know, just over and over we see where um, this is such an important program uh, on our uh, at our college. And so thank you for all you do for the in this uh, arena, uh, Galen. Amen. And now, <laughs> and now I'll call the question, OK? Uh, Regent Crump? Yes. Vice Chair Draghi? Yes, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're all, we've all been there. Uh, Secretary Hertenberger? Yes. Regent Marvel? Yes. Regent Shelton? Yes. Regent Starkey? Yes. Regent Stuxa? Yes. Regent Tackard? Yes. And Chair Sanchez says yes. So that makes the motion uh, passing unanimously 9-0. Thank you, Galen. Um, item 15 uh -huh, a is the AGCM report on the status of construction. Uh, Amos uh, is going to uh, share some information, and this is information only. Amos, it's all yours. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, it's I uh, thank you for um, inviting us to give a, a an update on the bond program. Let me share my screen. As always, I uh, I miss seeing everybody in person. I hope I hope every I hope it, it's it. I haven't been tracking it, but it, it, nobody would ever imagine it's going to be almost a year probably at some point in time here soon and and uh, I, I, I'm hoping nobody forgets my name. So it, anyway, um, the last time we got together, it was uh, in uh, um, we it was in uh, uh, November 
and um, we gave a kind of a, a visual update of of the bond project uh, uh, to that point in time. Um, this evening, I'm going to kind of share with you guys the things that's happened since then, uh, mostly over the holidays. And so there was uh, you guys, uh, uh, you know, all the students took all their final exams and took off for the holidays and we had some opportunities to get in some areas uh, and uh, and make a lot of progress. So I was going to just go through most of the buildings and share with you these items. In a building, we um, these are these are actually some photos that we had uh, in November, but all of this has been tidied up and the air handlers have been installed and we're going through the punch list items uh, in a building. We're hoping to get uh, the uh, the second floor uh, turned over and 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 available to the student bodies and, and also uh, administration areas uh, on the ground floor where uh, uh, Kelly and his team are still operating. We're hoping to get them back into their regular offices because they're kind of huddling up in a kind of in a corner almost at this point. Um, in C building, um, C building was kind of a unique thing. It, it was scheduled to happen earlier in the year, but um, because of uh, the, um, the the child care, uh, it couldn't be really closed down and we couldn't work around all the children. Um, it was advantageous that we take that uh, building out of the rotation and move it over to the holidays. Uh, what it did was it gave us a very short period of time to work in that building. So we so it took a lot of planning and and uh, but uh, you know, it it became available uh, available to us. Uh, um, I think it was like the fort, uh, the twelfth or the fourteenth or something like that uh, of December, and we had to get it back open by the the fourth of of uh, January. And so we've done that. Um, we had to do the same thing with the HR uh, suite uh, in D building. Uh, there was a uh, uh, you know. Some critical things that were going on uh, when we were when we actually took the rest of D building offline, and uh, and that that area couldn't be taken offline at that point. So we also took that out of the rotation and moved it over and and made uh, kind of a fast track project out of it over the holidays. Um, these are there's two chillers here. Um, the two new chillers. Um, let's see. There are two new chillers here in this picture, which are which is a big deal. Currently, um, there was one new chiller um, uh, that the college has been using, and then there was one very old chiller that was kind of uh, supplementing the the larger one. Uh, we now have two new chillers in there, so that you're able to take, um, you know, these get to uh, these operate in kind of a rotation. So now we get to give some of your other equipment or rest and also there's some redundancy so if something does go offline you're still able to uh, provide air conditioning uh, to the rest to the campus um there was we did find some asbestos in the plaster in e building um and and there uh that has uh, over the holidays been removed and uh, and e-billing is uh, starting to uh, um, have some more significant progress at this point. These are some more pictures of e-billing. E-billing uh, is an interesting building and I, I think that um, these photographs are, are very interesting and I think that everybody's going to be really excited when you see the finished product. Um, also over the holidays, uh, we did we uh, used some of the refresh money for finishes, and in G building we we, uh, we painted all the classroom walls and uh, also uh, door frames. And so um, G building starting to look really good. This is uh, there was some mechanical equipment in in building that we uh, installed over the holidays. This is uh, uh, an air handler. It's in uh, that the old mechanical yard and uh, it's 
it's up and running at this point. Um, some uh, some uh, some additional uh, equipment came in uh, in the uh, culinary lab, and uh, these are some pictures uh, of this equipment. Uh, I, when it all gets officially assembled, I hope to share some pictures of of students in there cooking and uh, in the complete facility. This is the other half of that building. Um, uh, the uh, the, the boardroom uh, and assembly spaces. Um, so you can start to see there's carpet going down the stage uh, in that far, far corner uh, on the right slide is uh, is starting to get constructed and so forth. Um, also over the holiday there was uh, we did some generator swaps. Um, we added, uh, we, we, we put all of A, B, C, and D on the A generator. It was a very large generator and it was only being used about 13% of its capacity. Uh, so we took the opportunity to take some of the other uh, um, generators that were on campus and move them around to areas that didn't have any uh, backup power. Um, this is one that came from the uh, B building and it was moved over to H and it's it's going to feed power to both uh, H, N and G. And you can see where we were doing some trenching, uh, running the cables and so forth over to N building. Uh, there's two more parking lots that were completed. Uh, a, a building parking lot is completed and so is the H building parking lot. And um, these are things that we have um, have never really had the opportunity to share with you. Um, previously, uh, the college asked us, hey, um, there's a few other things that we would like to do and while you're here. And um, so there was some renovations of uh, several areas on campus and um, the, we've, we've gotten with the architect, it's been designed and we're negotiating with a contractor right now to get this work started. But uh, I, I just wanted to, uh, you know, at a very high level share with you the, the magnitude of this. And um, so this is uh, the ground floor of a building and uh, there's several departments here and uh, that's that's been, you know, the admissions and and, uh, and actually there are several departments here that are getting reworked. And so I'm just sharing real high level uh, pictures of this stuff. This is in C building. Um, th there's a there's the marketing areas uh, being reworked. This is in D building. Uh, the uh, the art department used to be where the TV and radio is, and they've been kind of pushed around in different places. Uh, this is where they're going to settle. Is over in D building on the second floor. As a consequence, there. They've had to kind of, we've had to move the uh, free, uh, the uh, uh, the crime lab uh, from here to another location and actually goes over into in building now, which is, uh, I'll show you that in just a minute. Th these are some upgrades uh, in the uh, uh, building H in the police department. So that there's uh, male and female locker rooms and uh, they'll get a new restroom that's ADA compliant and a sink in their um, in their kitchenette area. This is the crime lab that's moved over to in building uh, that used to be over in D building. And uh, we had uh, we had we did a lot of work or are, are still working on uh, uh, our building, uh, but there was uh, you know, for budget reasons, we were, did not redo that restroom. It was ADA compliant. Um, we're now going to go in there and replace the finishes so that that building has a, a, a complete new look to it. And that concludes kind of the update. I'm here to ask, answer any questions that you may have. So do we have any questions, uh, board members? Regents. It was on the F building. Did it wind up having any uh, power? I, I mean, uh, emergency power. Did they have a generator or anything tied to it that would at least 
do uh, minimal emergency lighting? Uh, you're talking about the gym, F? Yes. No, we didn't. Uh, there, that was a, a discussion at one point in time. Um, it's, uh, uh, it, there's still a lot of capacity on that A generator. And at some point in time in the future, if you got guys decide to spend the money on that, um, I, I think that it can be, can be done fairly easy, easily. Um, but no, in this, in this package, no, it wasn't. Okay. All right. Well, it, it just upstairs in the locker rooms there. That was one of the first places we ha used to have to go to try and get people out because it was dark and we got the maintenance. People finally put up some emergency lighting that came on battery packs, but it was just trying to keep them up, keeping batteries in those so that people had light to see to get out. Right. Okay. Well, we did. We are replacing all the light light. Um, you know, we're, we're upgrading to LED light fixtures. And so um, it, it's possible, you know, I, I could look into that in more detail, but I have a feeling that we, we replaced it with light fixtures that, that if they're still on batteries, they're gonna last longer. Longer, that's good. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, anyways, yeah. so you, you specifically talked about two buildings as far as that we'd be pleased with. You talked about the Nolan Ryan Center and the Student Center, the e-building, I guess. So what's your timelines for both of those two projects? So I I, I project that, uh, and Matt's not here, and he would be able to give you a much more accurate, um, but I, I think we're going to have another month, uh, month and a week or two in uh, our building, and I think e-building is going to play out for about, uh, two to three months probably so we'll we'll have a board meeting this semester you're saying in the Nolan ryan building we will yes <laughs> great great what, and, one more question uh yeah. the last meeting uh roger brought up a question about the possibility of running the wiring in the parking lots you know what i'm talking about any update on that i do and we haven't done it yet. Uh, our thoughts are that it would be over there in the D lot, and that would probably be some, that's something I still need to discuss with um, with administration. Um, but uh, uh, we we have been putting in uh, blue light infrastructure in that parking lot so that we can come back and put in the blue light phones, and, and that would be the same kind of infrastructure. I don't know that we'll actually put in the charging stations, but we'll definitely get the infrastructure there so that if it if we can't do it now, it can be done in the future. Yeah, because I think the, the, the point was just to make sure we had the conduit or whatever there in place while y'all were trenching. And so long yeah. as it was under that 50,000 cost limit. So you, you feel confident we'll be able to at least get that. The conduit? infrastructure, the infrastructure for sure. Yes. OK, thank you. Anyone else? If not, uh, this was an information item uh, only so that uh, we thank you, Mr. Byington, for this information and um, tell Mr. Graves hello for us. And yes, we will see you next time, uh, perhaps. And we are going to move on then to item 16, which is to consider the approval of the of personnel uh, faculty uh, uh, simulation coordinator ADN. Um, and so, um, we just uh, uh, need a motion to approve Justin Morgan as the faculty simulation coordinator uh, for the associate degree nursing program. If I could entertain a motion by uh, Regent Shelton and a second by Regent Tackard, please. So moved. Second. OK, we have a motion on the table. Are there any questions for Dr. Albrecht on this? Hearing none, we'll go ahead to uh, vote. Um, Regent Crum? Yes. Vice Chair Draghi? Yes. Secretary Hertenberger? Yes. Regent Marble? Yes. Regent Shelton? Yes. Regent Starkey? Yes. Regent Stuxa? Yes. Regent Tackard? Yes. And Chair Sanchez votes yes. That's a unanimous uh, vote on that 9-0.
Um, we are on to item 17, which is to consider the approval of personnel reallocated from court reporting faculty position to a logistics materials and supply chain management faculty. Uh, I would entertain a motion uh, from uh, Regent Starkey and a second by uh, Regent uh, Stuxa to approve Michael Fernandez as a logistics materials and supply chain management faculty. Could I no, hear no, that? No. OK. And Roger, can you second that? Yeah. OK, we have a motion on the table. Do we have any questions? Hearing none, let's move forward and vote. Regent Crum? Yes. Regent uh, Vice Chair Drage? Yes. Secretary Hartenberger? Yes. Regent Marvel? Yes. Regent Shelton? Yes. Regent Stuxa? Yes. Regent St Starkey? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Regent Tackard? Yes. And Chair Sanchez? Yes. So the motion passes 9-0. Moving on um, to uh, item 18, and this is to consider the approval of tuition discount for dual enrolled in district homeschool students. Uh, Dr. A, would you like to speak to that? Yes, thank you, Chair Sanchez. Uh, a little while back, we had uh, some a parent of a homeschooled student who has a dual enrolled student attending Alvin Community College wrote to some board members and asked about why is there no discount for in-district uh, homeschooled students? And so we looked into this and uh, uh, found that the, the fiscal impact is, is very small, although it could vary from semester to semester as more homeschooled students could be enrolled at the college. But we looked at it and we are recommending that we do lower the uh, tuition rate from the $47 normal uh, tuition rate or to $25, which is what an in-district Alvin ISD student would pay. And you could see the chart on the following page uh, that reflects that recommendation. Okay, so um, Regent Tackard, if you would make the motion and uh, Secretary Hartenberger, if you would second it, please. And so that is to approve, thank you, approve the approve. Dis tuition discount for dual enrolled in-district students effective for spring 2021. Uh, as presented and uh, all other fees for dual enrolled in district homeschool students remain the same. So we have a motion on the table by Regent Tackard and a second right Secretary I sec Hertzberger. I second that. Yes, great. So we have a motion on the table. Do we have any questions for Dr. A? I have a comment. OK, so I mean, first of all, I'm, I'm glad to see us doing this to bring equity for dual enrollment students regardless of where they are studying or coming from per se. That being said, since I am the only board member who has two children who are homeschooled, dual enrolled, and would thus directly benefit from this discount, I will abstain from this vote. However, I am quite clearly uh, for this item's approval. <laughs> Thank you, Regent uh, Shelton. So, uh, so uh, heard there. So we have a motion on the table and we are ready to move the vote, right? OK, so Regent Crum. Yes. Vice Chair Drage. Yes. Secretary Hartenberger. Yes. Regent Marvel. Yes. Regent Starkey. Yes. Regent Staxa. Yes. Regent Tackard. Yes. And Chair Sanchez votes yes. So that motion passes eight with one abstention. Um, thank you all. I think that's going to be very helpful for our homeschool kiddos. Uh, we are now on item 19 and um, I am going to ask that um, Regent uh, uh, Vice Chair Drage uh, make a motion uh, regarding this item, please. And then if uh, Regent Starkey would second it. Regent Drake. Okay. I move that we approve giving notice of the proposed termination of an advisor's um, uh, contract. Second. Thank you. 
OK, we have a motion on the table. I don't think there's any uh, reason to uh, to comment on this, so we will move forward with a, a, a vote. Uh, Regent Crum. Yes. Vice Chair Draghi. Yes. Secretary Hardenberger. Yes. Regent Marvel. Yes. Regent Shelton. Yes. Regent Starkey. Yes. Regent Stuxa. Yes. Regent Tackard. Yes. And Chair Sanchez votes yes, so that motion passes 9-0. Um, we are now to our financial report ending uh, November 2020. Um, Carl will, will present that for us, and then uh, once he does that, uh, we would entertain a motion for uh, uh, from uh, Regent Marvel and a second by Regent Starkey. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Steger. Well, I just want to point out uh, all the kudos that were given to Ms. Kraft earlier in, in this is one more because uh, this is her handiwork that you saw month after month after month. And these are not easy to put together. Uh, all the ladies that work in the, the business office, they help make these numbers accurate, but it's it's Debbie that puts these together every, every month. And uh, so just from that alone, we're going to miss her. Uh, there's no greater feeling than to hire someone and uh, and they stay around and they do such a, a great contribution to this college. And I just want to uh, thank her from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> uh, Thanks, other than that, uh, what we have here is uh, November financials. You have uh, August financials revisited. Um, they are uh, now audited numbers that you have in there, so that's you can compare those to the original August from that we had in September. Uh, and then the November uh, investment report. So you got several several different things to look at here. OK, so do we uh, want to get a motion? Um, Regent Marble, you want to move? For approval. So moved. And then uh, read to Starkey. Second. So we have a motion on the table and now so you uh, if you have any questions for Carl. No questions for Carl. Well, I just want to iterate here that Debbie, I will truly miss you because I know I take up probably most of your time at these meetings in the past. And so <laughs> I'll, I'll miss the conversation and and 100 percent accurate answers you've always given me. And, and Debbie, well you done, can be, Debbie. Yes, well done, Debbie. And Debbie, you can be praying for your replacement because <laughs> they'll have to learn to put up with us. And so that that's what we're going to ask of you. Just be on your knees on these these nights of our meetings. But thank we truly, you, truly, thank you all truly. very much. I appreciate all the comments. We're going to be working there. We just we love you and appreciate you and and uh, and you move us all to tears. Truly. Truly, and if we there are no further questions on this, we're going to go ahead and vote. Uh, Regent Crum. Yes. Re Vice Chair Draghi. Yes. Secretary Hertenberger. Yes. Regent Marble. Yes. Regent Shelton. Yes. Regent Starkey. Yes. Regent Stuxa. Yes. Regent Tackard. Yes. And Chair Sanchez votes yes. And that's a unanimous 9-0 uh, uh, vote. And I can tell you guys that we are going to discuss consent agenda at our 25th, uh, January 25th workshop. Uh, I think we will welcome discussing it and seeing what we can get done.
Second. All right. All in favor. Bye. 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 Y'all have a great weekend. Thank you.